You guys wanted to see a review of an all-American pickup truck and here it is, just for you, the Ram 1500. This one here, the Rebel or off-roadish version, is quite a Rebel, especially on German roads because it's a huge truck here for narrow German roads. So let's try it out in exterior, interior and the driving experience here on Autogefühl and everything in full HD, full screen and indeed full length. Let's go! This new fifth generation of the Ram has dropped its Dodge name, formerly Dodge Ram. Now they decided all of their trucks just dropped the Dodge name. That's then for the passenger cars and they are just called Ram. It also has lost its crosshair front grille. So it has a new front grille design in general also for those more luxurious chrome versions. Here the Rebel has this rugged off-road look with the black plastic. Also towing hooks in the front has an skid plate here for the floor cover for more protection even more ground clearance and so on and also comes with more standard equipment for example air suspension as standard otherwise an option and also the full led headlamps the length here is at 5 meters 91 19 foot 4 or 233 inches so there's a quad cap available with a six foot four box or one meters 90 and 90 centimeters of leg room. Then there's a crew cap available with a five foot seven box or one meters 70 as for the loading area. And then the leg room of 114 centimeters. That's the one you can see right here. And then there's a crew cap long bed. And again with a six foot four box, one meters 90 in length and also one meters 14 in the leg room so that would have had a longer wheelbase then but already this one here with a short wheelbase is somewhat a very large car for german uh, relations here on our roads so you can see how, how really i can walk along this car for a long time a great red color here especially for the rebel fitting with the contrast wheel arches here 18 to 22 inch wheels those ones here are the 18 inch off-road tires so those semi off-road tires they also work for the road but look definitely massive than those contrasting mirror caps and you can see also how high the car is side door step right here um, it's very very interesting i always show, show you right now that the rear doors actually open 90 degrees that's a very interesting thing you can you know easier access the interior then and here towards the bed you have those ram boxes so you can open them right here and that's a quite handy thing you, you can store some uh, various items in those so a really cool idea and then you can get those massive auto tire i like those wide contrasts here too and of course the general design is boxy as you would expect here from such a truck so which version would you actually pick from the ram oh and did you wonder when the car is closed, the side boxes are also closed. When you open the vehicle, then they are also unleashed. Well, in the rear, this unmistakably a truck design, just boxy and wow, this huge lettering here with the RAM, very impressive. The rear view camera is, by the way, placed right there. There's also the regular towing equipment and the payload is about you know over 2,000 pounds and about 1,000 kilograms just here on the loading area and the towing capacity especially here with the V8 is more than 12,000 pounds so approximately six tons and it depends on the regulations of course first of all the Rebel can tow a little bit less and also when you drive this one here in, in Europe different regulations will count and you're not allowed to tow as much as you would do in the US. And should you wonder about all those AEC badges all over the vehicle, 
they are actually the importer for Europe or especially for Germany and they supplied us with the vehicle so also thanks for that because otherwise in general we cannot get a ram in Germany directly from the manufacturer. So this is the 5.7 liter V8 Hemi engine 400 horsepower 7.8 seconds is the acceleration figure mild hybrid system and the same also accounts for the 3.6 liter V6 engine 300 horsepower and for later is also a six liter diesel announced and fun fact here they also have an LPG additional equipment from a third party and this is just special for the European roads because petrol is so expensive here and funnily the engine block smells like wheat I'm not sure why that is especially grease or some liquid or has it maybe to do with the LPG I don't know but it's just a very funny finding I also checked it up at some forums. It's really a thing. There are a lot of people saying that their REM actually smells like weed. And I suppose it's something like burning stickers somewhere from an all new car. We also had it with some Mazda vehicles that smelled like burning somehow when they were very new. That you know, some glues, adhesive, or some stickers that are placed somewhere are burning off some at some place when the vehicle is all new. And usually it goes away after a while. Now join me on the interior, soft touch here throughout the whole door, also red contrast here for the Rebel, reasonable space at the inside and also a contrasting logo then on the rubber floor mats to also you know, clean them easier for off-road use. You can also adjust the pedals, it's an interesting function. Then if you have a third-party LPG, this is the one where you can change it then. Um, but again, that's not the same equipment. Then a more red contrast here, also the instruments. Steering wheel two, red contrast stitches. Then there are special seats and also special styling for the Rebel. I would recommend there are um, seats where you have fabric on the inside for the Rebel and leather red on the outside. This is pretty amazing. Here on those here you sweat a little bit more. And what's also strange here is that you have, you know, when you touch this surface here and it's like with the Cadillac Escalade, it's like this, this plop plastic foil underneath you can hear it somehow it's really really strange so they offer some fabric and leatherette choices so you don't have to go for an animal skin it's good that they have a lot of seating choices surfaces and also colors in their lineup now let's get inside you can use this doorstep and you sit extremely high yes and it always depends on how you put the air suspension up or down you can also press twice on the key by the way to lower the car again but the door has to be closed for that and the ignition running so i'm not exactly sure what's the real use case for that i'm one minute 86 or six foot one that still leaves some headroom right here also good high upper seating position you can change the steering wheel height and reach and it's very smooth in the process so that's also good from the build quality they also work on that handle right there for off-road use for example and there's definitely reasonable space but also the middle tunnel here is very large so um, yeah, there could be a little bit more room to move around I think but of course you know the seats are also definitely wide enough and also comfortable and upright so you can also take it on some longer runs interior overview definitely this middle console is new this is the center of the car now either 8.4 inch screen or this on 12 inch screen in a vertical way reminds a little bit of the Tesla <laughs> orientation for example you still have a volume knob right there and here to tune the radio stations or also use it here for while driving to control something of the infotainment system even works with a carplay still like to have the volume knob and it's good that you can easily access warmer colder and also here the vent strength so that's cleverly oriented also here with the drive modes, when you put it from P to D or reverse, you can just turn that here. And also from two-wheel drive to all-wheel drive and the, um, uh, the low gear and so on, axle lock, everything is really in the grasp of the driver. That's really good. Steering wheel here with right side cruise control, left side to control 
those instruments, a mix of analog and digital. And I like really those rebel red accentuations all over the vehicle. So more rebel logos right there. And you can have this uh, additional glove box compartment. The second one is here in the lower part. So interesting to have this one here. And a really cool opening mechanism, isn't it? Also nice build quality here from those lower buttons here for the air suspension, for example, put it upper or lower and zoom all I did to the infotainment screen in the lower part. This is a good solution, USB-C and normal USB devices, both at the same time, so you have it flexible as for that. You put your smartphone here in the lower area right there, next to some cup holders and a huge compartment here. Wow, this is really massive for a lot more storage and you can also slide it forward or backward so you can store so much in here. Oh, and by the way, they have also some Easter eggs like here metric conversion tables or something like that it's below the armrest when you flip it up oh, also inside this middle compartment right there are some silhouettes from trucks they once built one more detailed look here at the instruments right there so analog at the sides are set and in the middle part then you can uh, for example check the tripometer have the digital speed right there and so on, or some El Carpa information. And it's actually everything is pretty clear to read. And now this infotainment system, here you can see the Apple CarPlay integration. Great sound quality, by the way. There's an Alpine sound system in here, but there's also a Harman Kardon 19 speaker system available, so both is possible. They can also be already access to CarPlay here, Android Auto also available. The um, seat controls here for the heated steering wheel, for example, heated seats are right there when the car is running. And then on top part you can always have the home screen for the carplay or the home screen for the whole car here in the top left part and always the options right there so set enough here we go so you can see right there it's also a very clear display also can zoom in and out in the map so that's pretty fancy so it's a mix you know you have still have some hard buttons but then you also have this screen. So in some other cars we rather have manual controls or then a big screen where everything is in there. But here I think it's a quite good compromise that you can still have a lot of stuff uh, you know, manual. So and here there's also a rear view camera with a very good resolution like that and it also changes here those lines. It also gives you direction here where you know, the middle part is here just directly at the toy nook. And as for the panoramic roof you can open this shade right here and you can also of course open the whole stuff but you can also just tilt it so here we go it's open all the way then you can leave a lot of fresh air in and now to the rear again you can see 90 degree opening almost for the doors that's pretty easy to get inside then and also the side step is really useful then and wow i mean <laughs> look at that lag room told you earlier there are different cabins here available and what I meant by legroom either 90 or 114 centimeters what they mean by that is this you know the total length from here just to the window so the whole length of the rear cabin here and as I said earlier you either can get the longer loading area and the shorter legroom here or the shorter loading area and the longer legroom here or with the long wheelbase versions then here the long leg room and the long loading area. In this case here the focus is set on the longer leg room right here so this version here has the shorter loading area and then you can well, easily move around here so we have ample of space also when you think about here this um, you know there's no middle tunnel because everything's put below the vehicle because it's high enough so you can easily sit here also in the middle part that's very rare we find in the industry USB-C and normal USB-C chargers here cup holders then the real power plug two you can access three times isofix so on all seats in the rear and what's also pretty cool that you can have here this head restraint just fold down you can have a better view to the rear and when you have this open loading area you might want to use the rear compartment here for storage and then you can almost make it a full-size trunk like this by flipping all those seats up so that's a pretty cool option 
and then you have a lot of room here to store stuff to basically live in this vehicle. And here, look at that, ta-da! Some hidden storage compartments on both sides. Then the loading area, what's pretty cool is it's dampened so it doesn't crush all the way down. See it here? Smooth, really cool. And just as a proof, this one here is the shorter loading bed with 1 meter 70. The other one would be 1 meter 90. So this is the difference then here. So yeah, this difference. So either you have this diff uh, this length here, additional in the length of the loading bed, or on the interior, and the latter one is the case here. At the moment, there's a tire just fixed right there. And you see one disadvantage here of those boxes on the left and the right is that the whole loading area here then is a little bit narrower. So this is definitely a disadvantage then if you want a wider loading area when you have those boxes. And here overall, the width of this loading area with the boxes is about 1 meter and 30. So 1 meter 30 is the width with those boxes. But you can see you can also fix some things right there with tension belts here and there. So overall pretty cool. And have you seen by the way that we opened the rear window here? This is also a nice option to let some more air in or to reach through things. What's up brothers and sisters? Welcome here to Thomas's driving lounge with the Ram 1500 Rebel. And this is the very first time I'm driving this one here on German roads. And it's indeed somewhat peculiar because, I'm not sure if you can already pick it up on camera, but this car is hardly fitting the lane here. <laughs> Look at when there's like a trailer now, just on the side of the road. You have to take evasive actions and you sit super super high above the road although at the moment I'm in this um, aerodynamic air suspension mode so I can also vary the ride height while driving but this one here would be the one that is suitable now for road driving and I told you earlier the Rebel comes standard with the air suspension and that's very rare for a pickup truck and it makes the ride indeed more comfortable than usual. So we've driven a lot of pickup trucks that were somewhat, you know, a little bit rough in the in the drive. Um, but here the air suspension definitely gives you more comfort. You cannot directly compare it to an air suspension for a modern full-size SUV because that's giving you even more comfort. When you're going over some fierce bumps, you still have, you know, some rattling. You still feel that the base of the vehicle is still to be somewhat rugged, of course. That's what it's there for. Especially here, the Rebel version, which has a lot of off-road capabilities. Well, it is somewhat a little bit squeezed in here when I'm in traffic, definitely. The only good thing is I have such a presence on the road that probably not so many people will say, oh, I just squeeze in there and you know <laughs> so you have a lot of respect then and talked about it quite a lot of times when you're driving small vehicles in Germany you're always getting bullied especially if, um, from behind from bigger often in faster cars even though those same people sit in it but I mean it's never good to be bullied but I think it's especially unfair when they do it when you are in a small car so no problem with that right here also modern assistance systems, for example, a blind spot monitor, you can see that here in the side mirror. And indeed, people hesitate a little bit before overtaking <laughs> because they know they cannot win against this one here. I was also doing some parking in and out and someone think, oh, do I hit the pavement with the wheels here? But with those off-road tires here and the overall great ground clearance here, I think like, yeah, if I scratch the pavement at some point, who cares? And I was looking like, when parking out, oh, do I hit the pavement there in some way or something? And the car was just like rolling over it in a very smooth and soft way. And it's like, oh, you know, whatever pavement. So funny things you definitely experience here with this vehicle. And I could very well imagine now running through the Carolinas with this vehicle. That would be the more suitable location 
to drive this one here. Not exactly here in Germany because again the roads are very narrow but it's definitely a very interesting experience just to do that for once you know. And we also head on out to the motorway and see how it performs there. What I already realized is for this segment here it's actually quite silent so they really work on the noise insulation you don't have any you know although we have those off-road tires you don't have any special tire noise you might hear we'll see, see how it plays out when, when we drive faster but it's really super silent here and at the moment at 50 kilometers or 33 miles per hour it's a very very relaxing drive again our seating position that's also you know nice for for longer travels and the air suspension you know it is as i said not a super super soft air suspension so that's also intended that it doesn't get you know too wobbly in the ride but definitely adds some comfort we're also driving this <laughs> enormous v8 engine 5.7 liters of displacement and you can drive it in a very silent way it even has a cylinder on um, you know a cylinder de deactivation so the cod and also this mild hybrid system for both the v6 and the v8 yeah but if we take a look at the fuel consumption mm, yeah the question is you know if that's really making sense so when hammering it on the motorway you couldn't score like 19 liters one kilometers that would be about like 13 mpg and now when i drive very calm here in the city then maybe also this you know all the, the measures they've taken play a little bit more of a role and then i'm at the moment here at about 15 liters on 100 kilometers and that is still below 20 below 20 mpg mm. But we'll see how that one plays out towards the end of the review. Keep you updated with that. You're yeah, also very good with the brakes when someone is spontaneously braking or so. And you always have to pay attention. I mean, it's a very heavy car when you see like, you know, some, some kids at the road. Okay. Yeah, I didn't want to um, let them pass it now because that's, it can be dangerous when um, cars are coming from the opposite direction. And then you think, oh, you know, doing them a favor, letting them pass and then you maybe send them into the other vehicles so you know i would i would i only only do that when i see that the other side of the road is also clear then you can also just stop and that would also be a good use case for here because when i stop with this vehicle and say you know pedestrians cross the road then the road is blocked so that's it <laughs> and everyone behind me has to wait also pretty funny so about the steering itself it's very light so even when you're parking in and out you don't need um, much force uh, it, on the other hand it doesn't give you much steering feel then for that by the way we are in the two-wheel drive mode so it's the rear wheel drive then you would usually do that when driving on the street and just put in the awd when you're driving off-road because it's also better just for the you know for the whole material don't want you know to put any of the differential locks to be activated or something rebel you might remember that comes with a rear diff lock as standard and then you can also put in the low gears if you would be driving off-road we do not have a legal off-road track here close by i hope that we're able to drive true off-road round with this one here maybe at the later stage somewhere somehow that would be pretty cool because again ground clearance here enhanced and also this um, you know this, this skid plate here on the floor um, extra to protect the car from from the ground so uh, some things they changed here to make it even more off-road capable and I think that works pretty well definitely also when off-roading now we're heading on out to the motorway and I really have to say it is somewhat very easy to drive it's especially for for the relations here as how big or narrow the roads are it's too big for for this country yes but then again although it's super long and super wide it's really very easy to control you know 
this power steering here makes it so easy and as it's silent also the automatic transmission here does a very good job very smooth transitions definitely between the gears so overall I'm very satisfied and this new 2019 model gives you a very modern pickup truck and I think that's that's definitely also what was like the um, you know the key thing they wanted to achieve so what about some acceleration so when I'm here now at about 60 kilometers an hour well, let's switch to my it's like 38 and let's hammer it so that was 62 miles or 100 kilometers and yeah kind of gone also quite intensive from the sound and getting pushed slightly of course you feel that this weight has to get moving at some point uh, I do expect less fuel consumption from the V6 engine recently also had that with other vehicles that the six cylinders were definitely way more efficient than the eight, eight cylinders the eight cylinders are always like you know I'm driving a V8 you know or when it makes really sense when you have to tow something really really heavy this car here as I explained to you earlier has massive towing capacities and you know that would be a use case then when you say you, know, you need a strong engine for that cruise control you set here on the right side and even you're now on the motorway here 100 kilometers or 60 miles an hour is very silent so surprisingly good indeed so good ratings here as for the noise insulation and it's also stable enough here for the motorway so don't feel I would be totally wobbling around although I have those off-road tires here that's also what they intended with the air suspension not to make it too soft however I have to stress again don't mistake it for a modern full-set SUV as for the air suspension comfort this is of course even better than this one here would be rather when you need the towing when you want the truck the loading capacity in the rear you just want the different building style of car so and by the way when I try to shake it up I mean it can shake up but I still feel so much in control of the vehicle so it doesn't you know go nuts when when I induce that that's very interesting now it's also a good to test here with the roundabout see here also how much I need as for the steering input you can see quite a lot so it's not that progressive but then again it's also thought to be an off-road vehicle getting off here that's well, actually quite good as for the agility so Again, it doesn't feel like it would be an old rusty pickup truck or something because just have this conservative building style. They really created a modern truck that has good driving capabilities. You can get around that in your everyday driving life and still then have all the usability that this truck is offering. So if you think about you know driving this one here for the very first time, indeed it doesn't drive that much different than a normal car getting off here again I'm actually quite you know, pretty much enjoying this ride also always taking a look here at the rebel additional plastic fender features like all this you know, top design element there on front of the hood it's also very interesting and here again the braking performance is, is very well done although the car is so heavy Turning indicator sound, by the way, it has a little bit more of an echo. You know, I'm not sure where the sound generator for that is sitting, but it sounds like it would be sitting where there's like a bigger resonance room around it or something. It could be a little bit more refined, but you know, that's just a very small notch. But uh, I always like to um, take a look or hear, to take some comments about acoustics on the vehicle because. I think that's really um, accounting to the overall impressions you, you get from, from this car here. Here in the digital display, by the way, I can also very well read the speed. It's a very clear display. When I want to change the temperature while driving, I can do it right here, so I don't have to go in the screen. I can directly hit those buttons. That's also good. Volume knob is also easily accessible. Here, I put that in a way that the driver can easily access that while driving 
I think that's also a very clever choice. So that's also well done. And I mean also the gear selector here. Why not? I mean, this is somewhat unusual, but it's directly in your, you know, in your grip here, or in your grasp. And it's super easy. Also when you go in like reverse and drive mode again, when you're going back and forth or something. So they really thought about good ergonomics, how to reach everything while driving. And I just agree. Um, when I put the air suspension up while driving, by the way, so you know, the car is raising. Probably now I look super fancy from the exterior. Now we are driving higher. This is the so-called normal ride height. The other one so far was the aerodynamic ride height. So this was especially good then for the motorway and so on. And this one here considered the normal ride height. Mm, yeah, you definitely feel that you're sitting higher now, have some more you know, overview. Uh, is it really different now as for the comfort when I'm driving over some bumps or something? Mm, don't think it makes too much of a di dist uh, difference. This one, by the way, here, um, Fiat Fullback that was, same platform as the Mitsubishi L200 or Triton. And this pickup you've just seen is the size that people would drive as pickup here in Germany. So that's like a Ford Ranger size. They are selling the Ford Ranger now again in the US. They did in the past and canceled, now picked it up again. This car was way smaller. The length is the main difference. So those pickups are way shorter. They are already a problem to park here in Germany. And those ones here uh, of course even more but again my key finding about driving this vehicle here is that it doesn't feel that large as you would expect when just looking at it and when looking at the facts and that it's a very easy and refined drive especially as for the noise insulation so really, really very positively surprised about that here again also good handling then through those bumps and with the air suspension, I think also a good feature. In Germany, it will get very expensive if you buy this vehicle. In the US, you have definitely way better prices. Of course, it takes some effort to import those cars here um, and to make them you know, homologated for the market right here. This car is, by the way, also equipped with the LPG function, so liquid. And this is not the CNG, it's the different one. You can save some money with that, especially when you live in Germany, where the um, normal petrol price are about double. Um, if you compare like the MPG and liter figures and add it up, you, we approximately pay double the price in fuel in Germany than you would do in the, in the US. It's just like next to the steering wheel there with this button where I could also run this car on LPG and save some money then. But, you know, in the US, uh, no one probably will do that. And so I'm keeping it on the pathway to give you an experience for that. So, you know, I'm also an off-road fan, two-wheel and four-wheel. So again, I hope we see us back at the driving path when we have the possibility to do so. But, you know, even though we're driving on the road due to the off-road off tires and the styling, you always feel somewhat off-roadish. And that's also the reason why those off-road packages are quite often also just bought because, you know, because it's somewhat cool. It doesn't make sense in a way in, in any case, but it's just somewhat cool. And definitely enjoying this ride here. Again, possibly surprised about the good noise insulation from the air suspension. I would have expected a little bit more so it is cool to have it here in this truck, but then again, you know, as for the small bumps and this, so on, and together with those softer off-road tires, I would have expected that the ride is a little bit softer. So, but you know, here in Auto Fuel, we always present you all the pros and cons about this vehicle. Oh, and up here, the panic handles here also for, for the off-road use. So, what do you think about driving the Ram 1500 here on the streets. So we had just yeah, another quick look here. 15 liters or more kilometers with a lot of cruising, one acceleration in it. It would be somewhat realistic. 
and yeah this 15 liters on one kilometers yeah, something below 20 mpg this this region is what you have to have to live with mm, again in us well a fuel price are way lower you won't care about that much but then again you also have the v6 possibility and if you own one of these here especially have the v6 please give me your comment what do you have as a fuel consumption there in mpg or kilometers and uh well, liters per one kilometers We'll be really looking forward to that, that we can also share some opinions. So, Ram owners, give us your comments. What are you thinking about this new iteration here? And also share your experience. I'm always looking forward when we review certain vehicles that possible already owners of those cars share their opinion and what they have experience of their cars. Because we can only rate the cars when they are brand new. This one here is super brand new at the moment but we can't say so much about the long-term experience that's coming then from the customers here in our auto fuel discussion this new generation features a lot of modern stuff and that really fits to the vehicle somewhat because it still stays very rugged and off-road capable especially as the rebel version and has this special off-roadish look here which to me is always very pleasing i like those off-road looks at the same time, it introduced very exciting features like, you know, like adaptive front grille for the intake, then the mild hybrid systems for the engines, the optional air suspension, which is standard here for the Rebel, big new infotainment systems, two sizes, and a modern experience when driving the vehicle, so it's relatively easy to drive, although it's a really full-size truck and even more than full size for European relations. So although it was, so to say, too big for European roads, you could still handle it very well and a very good noise insulation. So some of you guys sometimes say in the comments, Thomas really knows his shh when doing reviews and thank you so much for that. I can really say Rem really knows their shh when doing pickup trucks. <laughs> so that's my conclusion here for today. What would I change maybe? Yeah, I mean, some things on the interior could be a little bit more premium. It would be okay for the cheaper versions. If you go for the high-end version with a really expensive, then here and there you could, you know, step up the game a little bit, but it's already quite good for this segment especially. And also the air suspension, um, you know, I'm not really sure how it plays out off-road, but I would expect it a little bit more comfort if you have already an air suspension in that vehicle. But of course, it's already a quite good addition. So what do you say? Please leave me your comments here.